So in this video, uh, the first thing we look at is to express a linear system in a matrix form. This is actually a very simple step. Please look at the current system. You actually have two equations and two unknowns, x and y. The fact is that to express it in terms of a matrix form, basically it means that you have to cut out uh, the right-hand side with the left-hand side. Of course, the left-hand side uh, actually means what we have here on the left-hand side of both equations. And obviously, the right-hand side is easy, which is um, basically the right-hand column in the system. And the matrix form basically means um, on the right-hand side, you have to list them one by one, uh, one and three correspondingly for the two equations. And on each of the left-hand side for the rows, for example, the row one, you just have to focus on the coefficients attached to the variable. For example, if you look at x first, the coefficient is 4, and the second spot here is going to be the coefficient minus 3, right? And for the second line, of course, um, x basically means 1 times x, so we have the coefficient 1 for the x variable. And 4 actually means the coefficient for the y variables. And one important thing is that you have to align the variables on the same column. Basically, it's a column-by-column -column representation uh, for the variables in the matrix form. So uh, the fact that uh, we are doing it um, because it will make our job very easy when we try to use a systematic method to solve a bigger linear system. And let's look at uh, one or two more examples. Please look at the current system. You actually have two equations, but now you see you actually have three variables, right? And uh, it's a two equation and three variable system. And to write it as a matrix form, the right-hand side is actually easy. Uh, these are just the numbers on the right-hand side. And uh, for the left-hand side, if you're trying to list the variables in terms of the alphabetical order x, y, z, the fact is the first line is clear. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, respectively, for the coefficient attached to x, y, z. But please be careful about the left-hand side of the equation 2. This 6 you should not place it on the second column, right? Because uh, 6 belongs to the coefficients of x, you have to write 6 here. And for 5, it's going to be the coefficient for the y variable. So it's going to be the second column here for the 5. And you see the left-hand side of the segregation does not have the term 0. I mean, it doesn't have the term z. So it means that basically we have something like a 0 times z, right? And um, that's basically our system here. So now please look at the current system you have. And the fact is that um, it's a small system which has only two equations and two unknowns. And based on the last video, if you have watched that, uh, we have reviewed what you have learned in school. Basically, you know two methods to solve such a system already, which is either by the method of substitution or by the method of elimination of one of the variables. And um, now, I'll try to introduce the method uh, which is called the Gaussian elimination. And the advantage of this method is that you can easily generalize the systematic way to solve this problem uh, to a much bigger system. And uh, let us write it down in terms of a matrix form first. So in the matrix form, it's going to be a system like this, right? And um, you see the first column basically contains the coefficients of the x term, and the second column is the coefficients for the y terms. And of course, the right-hand side is basically um, the numbers you have in the system. And you can call the system like the first line basically is row 1, the second line is row 2. And now, uh, conceptually, the Gaussian elimination is much closer to the method of elimination rather than the method of substitution. And what you can do is that the first step is we always try to make some of the numbers in the left-hand side 0. And what I mean is that, you see, um, what we can do around the two rows, row 1 and row 2, is, um, is what we call the row operation. The fact is, uh, for example, to make this bottom left corner 0 and by using the row 1, the number 1, the fact is that maybe you can carry out something like row 2 minus 4 times row 1 on the row 2 here. So um, let me write it down here. Now the system, the first line remains unchanged because I'm not planning to change the row 1. And for the row 2, I'm doing a row operation, row 2 minus 4 times row 1. So you have to carry out the row operation column by column. For example, for the first bot, which is the column 1, uh, the row 2 here, 
you have 4, right? It's a minus 4 times the first number um, on the first column, which is 1. And in that case, 4 minus 4 is going to be 0, right? And it meets our goal, which is the first goal to make the bottom left corner 0. And this number is what? This number is going to be row 2 minus 4 times row 1, right? Row 2 is minus 3 minus 4 times row 1, which is 2, right? So uh, if you do this calculation, you're actually getting minus 11. And um, let's look at the last column. You have to change this number by using the row operation we have. So it's going to be row 1, which is minus 2, minus 4 times row 1, which is 5, right? So it's minus 2, minus 20, which is minus 22. And the good thing about eliminating the bottom left corner is that if you write it back into the linear system, what you have is the following. You see, because the first equation is unchanged, so I just write it as x plus 2y equals 5. However, now the second equation is changed. It's going to be minus 11y equals minus 22. And you see, uh, it is still a system of linear equations, two equations, two unknowns, but uh, I believe to solve it is much easier because you see the fact is that y can be obtained quite quickly just by the row 2. So y is actually 2, I think. And to find x is actually easy. I can use the first equation now by using the fact that y is actually 2. So uh, you understand that x is actually 1, right? And uh, these are the solutions to the system. So uh, this system is actually consistent in the sense that we have solutions and we have exactly one solution, which is x equals 1 and y equals 2, right? And that's the answer to this problem. And as some of you who are more curious, you can see that conceptually this method really offer nothing new because uh, it's basically quite the same as the method of elimination. But the fact is that by using the language of matrix and the row operations, we can uh, do it more systematically um, for a bigger system. And we'll do more examples in the next video.